Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art. Welcome to my channel. And once again, I'm diving straight into the uh, creation. And I'm thinking that I might be doing more and more of this in the future because the introduction is not necessarily needed and I can cover things as I go. But in this case, I went rogue. I just had colors and paints and tiles and I just wanted to go for it. And I also had music playing. So I'm gonna have to voice over this. And I'm also looking at reformatting so that I go uh, width-wise instead of tall-wise to give you more of the screen. So I first of all laid down my multi-pro pillow, which is uh, satin. And that last color was Amsterdam's Caput Mortem Violet. This here is my combination of Prism Pores Chantilly Lace and Golden's Iridescent Pearl. And I'll have all the colors and recipes listed in the description. This color here is Prism Pores um, Peach Dahlia. Yeah, I was just playing around with colors and sometimes I'm not um, prepared to record everything, but I do record everything anyway, just so I do have a record of it in case it does come out. So yeah, here we go. That is Golden's Dioxazine Purple. And the next color here is a combination of uh, Artez's uh, Pearl Pastel Green and Prism Pores Fandango. Yeah, I'm just trying to regroup and retool here to make it as efficient and pos as possible. And this last color is Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue. I just think maybe I could just dive right in more and as I'm getting ready to pour, I can show you the consistencies of the paints and the paints as I go versus having a two minute, you know, blab session showing you what I'm planning on doing versus just doing it and showing you what I have as I go. So cell activator, always stir it. This is my American Floetrol cell activator recipe with titanium white from Amsterdam. So I gave it a stir, drop a little dot down. And then my next color I'm using is Amsterdam's Ultramarine Violet, which is also used with the American cell activator. So, and I've been really, really stoked with how this cell activator works. I, I love my recipe. So I'm just popping a couple bubbles here and then I'll be giving it a blowout. I'll probably close up a little bit as I'm blowing out. So here we go with the blow, and as I blow it out, I try to blow it right down into the middle to start with to get it to blow out in all directions, kind of in a full circle. And then I think about trying to skim that cell activator over the colors and that colors over the pillow paint as I go. I want to get as much cell action and lacing as possible. I don't need to get it all the way to the edges because the spin's going to take care of that. But I do want to blow all of it out and I always just blow with my mouth. I don't ever use one of those little handheld tools because I just feel like I have a lot more control using my own breath as I go. So I'm going to pick up the pace through this section because you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm spreading the extra pillow paint from the center to the sides and making sure to cover all the edges because if you don't have the sides covered not having it covered will act almost like a break and the pillow won't want to spread there as you're spinning. So you want to get the sides as well. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get ready to spin here in a second, just blowing the middle a little bit extra to get the cells up and we'll give her a spin and I'll get back to real time for the spin. So the initial spin, you don't want to go crazy. You just want to give it a good spin. And your idea is to just try to get it centered before you start, spin it out so that it spreads out evenly in all directions. I also like to clean up in between each spin so I don't have paint flinging off in different directions. I don't have a puppy pool. I don't need it because I'm cleaning up in between. While I'm cleaning, I'm also looking at the composition and the colors to make sure I'm liking how things are developing as we go. So you could just see there that still the edges weren't fully covered on the corners. So you just keep spinning until you get all the paint to go over all the edges and the corners. So I'm going to cut out some of the cleanup portion and just get to the nuts and bolts. So 
So through this section, I actually spend several minutes debating over whether I want to keep this or not. And I point out that the purple is suddenly coming through the red, which I really like because I think the purple needed to be there to make it a little more interesting. I like the lacing and I like the cells, but I'm not sure I liked the color combination particularly. So there's one section that's kind of got me bugged and it's the section right here where that green fandango and pearl green kind of just conglomerated into one corner. So that's got me wondering if I really want to keep it or not. And then I see some uh, air bubbles that popped up there. So I give them a dunk and then I move on. You know, part of my angst about this is that I'm not real comfortable with reds. So it takes me a long minute to take a look at this to decide whether I like it or not. Is the composition good enough? Is the color right? So I go ahead and end up keeping it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just my own getting over myself sometimes with some of these color palettes. So here's the final results. I have this one and the other three in this color palette. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get all my latest art tutorials. And check out some of these links I'm going to have pop up where you can go to other color palettes and other videos if you want to keep seeing more blooms in progress where I maybe talk a little less. All right. Take care, everybody. Till next time. We'll see you later.